Hey, musicians, so is Vimeo any good for musicians? <sighs> Quick answer, not really, no. Look, if you want to edit videos, you're really using YouTube or Vimeo to actually edit is so long-winded. Both platforms are glitchy, slow, laborious. I mean, OK, in an emergency, I would say. But anything else, really, you need to be editing. I mean, TikTok's better. If you edit, a, especially if it's a short form video, if you edit a reel on Instagram, it's really simple. I use those for my short. Hello, cat. I use those for my shorts because they're, and I mean, you can do longer reels. You don't have to stick to the sort of 60 seconds. If you want it on YouTube shorts, you do need to stick to that 60 seconds. But you can do up to 10 minutes on TikTok. That's a really good music video, isn't it? Whatever, you know, whether you're, you're doing instructional video, what play along, you're trying to build up your rep, you know, um, live performances, anything like that. 10 minutes is quite a long time. I mean, most people don't watch videos for that long. So, you know, you've got to get that right. But you could do three minutes and do your, your whole track. If you wanted people to have it free, you can get royalties from TikTok and Facebook as well. If you're signed up with um, a royalties distributor, you will get money for using your songs. I think they the song has to be played for more than 60 seconds. I'm not I'm not going to promise that that's the truth, but I'm pretty sure a little tiny clip you won't get money for. Do you see what I mean? So you only get money if, if people are um, properly engaging. So it's worthwhile doing longer form videos for royalties. However, having said that, I I mean, I, I earned 2p this last quarter from Facebook and I've only been using my music on Reels. So I've what I did actually the last month is I've been using loads and loads of clips of my music. So we'll see. It, I don't get the results of the last month until next month, if you see what I mean. Um, it's really l slow to come in the, the, you know, the royalty figures, the absolute figures are really slow to come in. Um, I haven't made any money. I've broke just about broken even on all of my music and I've got a lot of it. And it's, you know, I use it in my videos. I use it as backing tracks. I use it all over the place and I it hasn't earned me any money. You just sort of think, oh, this streaming business, especially if you're an alternative musician, or you're doing something that's a bit different. I think you really have to think about, you know, is that a really a worthy career move? But there are other ways to make music and we cover those in, in these broadcasts anyway. We talk about that sort of stuff a lot. But if you're a teacher, as I am, I mean, I'm an animator and I use my music for that, but I'm also a teacher. I've just set up the Suzuki school and I've been fiddling around trying to make little trailers on Vimeo at total waste of time. I mean, just don't do it. You're better off making a trailer on iMovie, which is free, or TikTok. Get some clips of yourself, photograph little video bits, and just upload them to TikTok. Use TikTok to make your videos it's got great um transitions it's got great filters it's got really cool stuff you can't do any of that on vimeo you can't do any of that on on youtube on the editors i'm talking about um what else is wrong with vimeo everything god every the only thing i i like about vimeo and the reason i'm on it and i will stay on it is because i really like that you can set up your own channel and it has its own internet space. A couple of things I don't like about it. you If you give yourself, you can point a domain at your little, um, your page. The pages aren't very good for looking around, finding stuff, searching. It, it's a really basic template with your movies on it. So I think once you've got about 100 movies, you probably have to start up a new a new one, you know. Um, and if you're teaching exactly the same thing, what are you going to call it? Do you see what I mean? It's like, oh, how's that going to work? So I, I think, I mean, I'm too big for everywhere. That's the problem. The good thing about um, 
YouTube is you can store, I've got like 14,000 videos on YouTube. You can store them all. But making money through YouTube, I mean, actually, I have to say, all, all of my money that I make on royalties does come, most of it, 99% of it, comes from YouTube. Now, the other problem with YouTube, though, is they, they pay you royalties, but less for India. And most of my downloads and most of my music listens are in India. So, you know, I've got, I, I don't know, the same amount of um, downloads in India as I have in America. But in America, I've earned like 20 times as much. See what I mean? I think, oh, well, that's that's not great, is it? So I don't know why they don't consider India, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to be politically incorrect here, but, but what's wrong with India? <laughs> Just, I've no idea. Maybe it's because they have so much, um, you know, downloading and robots and all of that sort of stuff. They do a lot of that in India. They're very good with IT and sharing and um copying and maybe there's too much of that going on i don't know maybe advertisers in europe and america just don't have products that are suitable for the indian um, population but I, I i don't know if that would make business sense because actually that you know for me, something like music if you could get your music to be played in india a lot i mean this is what i'm going to focus on now because India is a rising star for me. This has only just come up in this month's um, stats, is that India now is is starting to rise up as one of my most downloaded parts of the world. I suppose if you can break India with your music and you break it enough and you've just got millions and millions of downloads, then you're probably talking about you would be able to make some money, but you'd and you'd create um sort of notoriety and what have you. Do you see what I mean? But I don't know what they dig in India. I mean, I'll, I'll go and Google it, guys. I'll let you know in the morning what I've discovered. Um, so yeah, basically, it's only if Vimeo is only any any good actually if you want to start a, a an actual channel, like a subscription channel. I'm talking about where people pay a monthly fee. And I guess once I've got too many videos, I will just take the old ones down and put up new ones or take the ones that people aren't looking at down. Now, the other thing is that's really good about the subscription thing is you can buy individual videos as well. So people can go to my site and they can buy a music video for two pounds. These are instructional videos. These aren't it's not entertainment. You'd never get two quid for somebody from somebody. Because they can stream stuff for free everywhere. I mean, that's a problem. And and then you, you're talking about 0.01p, I think, per stream. Something ridiculous. Um, So, yeah, I like that. And I've got another, uh, I've got an adult, a more adult art um, channel. And, and that regularly brings in every month I get, you know, um, earnings from that. And I don't add videos to that. I think there are 175, just leave them there. So, you know, it sort of depends what you do, I guess. Maybe, you know, at the end of doing Suzuki Book 1 and 2, which I'm going to focus on for this this current um, website, maybe I'll start a new channel and go on to the next book and I'll just leave these programmes here, you know, just leave them there like a collection. So it's, I think that's quite a good idea if you're a, a teaching musician you know if you're if you're doing that um and then you have another channel you see you have your youtube channel for all the trailers and examples and to sort of lure people in seduce them come to the one where you have to pay money do you see what i mean lure them in with the promise of wonderful things of course you don't there's no point in putting all your stuff up on youtube if you know you want subscribers you want to get people to pay money I mean, that, that's why we're all doing this music, isn't it? Because we love it, but we need to eat. <laughs> so, um, so you know, it's it's really a matter of, I think, finding a niche that, and my niche is Suzuki, cello, piano and violin. But I mean, that's something that you could think of. You could have a violin channel 
a, a piano channel and then um uh what was the other one i play <laughs> piano channel got a i mean i don't play violin by the way um but i un, i can arrange music so that's all i need to do but there aren't any by actual violin um instructional videos and i don't intend to learn i i thought today well actually the part of the viol viola viol is it viols i think they're called viols originally family um the violin the um cello and the viola you can apparently trans transfer quite easily from it's easier to do cello to viola than cello to violin so i could start the viola i love the viola actually oh shall i get an electric viola and just start why not let me do that i i i need a challenge i really do Okay, I'm going to do that. I don't think you can get Suzuki viola books, but I'll go and again, I'll go and see about that. Now, the other thing about, um, you know, creating videos for your music. The thing is, people love videos. The video is the biggest selling point that you, at your disposal. So you're missing a trick if you're not, you know, really bashing out videos you're really you know especially the thing about especially if it's instructional you know people like to watch and I used to do podcasts I used to do Suzuki podcasts and and they did kind of work but people couldn't watch you how you hold your cello or how you hold your hands when you know when you're playing your piano or whatever so the visual aspect a, it's really seductive for people. They they really want to see. They, they learn so much more by seeing. Also, you can do these really short. I mean, if you do 30 second audio broadcasts, they're, they're not nearly as interesting as 30 second video broadcasts. If you what well, video and audio, you'd have both, wouldn't you? See what I mean? So I think as a musician, whatever music you're doing, it's a really good idea to to use video in your sort of overall marketing um, trajectory and, and model, because it's mostly we can get, we can make it for free. I mean, you can't on Vimeo, unfortunately, but that's what I'm trying to say here. I think is Vim, Vimeo is only worth it. If you've got something that people will subscribe to, if you're just performing, unfortunately, people probably aren't going to subscribe because they can go onto YouTube and, and just watch so many musicians. Do you see what I mean? Which is really disappointing, isn't it? So Vimeo is only, only really good if, if you're thinking about a subscription channel. You may as well use TikTok and you can become a TikTok seller. So you could sell your music scores. You could sell instruments. That's quite a cool thing. You could actually buy instruments. You could, you could customise instruments. I was going to do that once. I was going to paint cellos, like, you know, with skulls and stuff like that. A bit cheesy, but a bit fantastic also. I mean, never underestimate the power of a customised hand-painted cello. Um, and guitars, of course, are the obvious ones, aren't they? Hand-painted guitar, really nice. Um, that, so that's something you could do. So you could get your TikTok and you could monetize it by selling something that's associated to music that you do. Um, even if it was just, you know, buying up instruments from China and, and tweaking them a bit or whatever. But the obvious one really is lessons, isn't it? And then the other obvious one is pe for people to buy your your CDs. But CDs don't really sell very well, as not as nearly as much as they used to. The other thing, vinyl records, they're coming back. Now, if you've got a brand and you're like, into, you're doing that hip hop and club scene, getting a vinyl is a great great idea but they're not cheap and you need a minimum order I think it's about a hundred that you need to make up um, and that starts running up quite a lot of costs you know um, but it is a, th a thought you know if you've already got you know a, a fan base what a great idea guys it was great talking to you back later